According to reporting from The New York Times earlier this month, President Trump initiated a phone call to Mitch McConnell, Senate Majority Leader, during which he accused McConnell of bungling the health care vote, got even angrier that Senator McConnell did not protect him from congressional investigations into the Russian interference into the 2016 election. What, if any, legal problem might this present? Some are definitely questioning it. Let's talk about this more with Richard Painter, professor of law at the University of Minnesota. He was the chief White House ethics lawyer from 2005 to 2007 and is vice chair of the Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. And in Washington, our old friend Lanny Davis, he served as White House special counsel during the Clinton administration, is also a strategic media and crisis management expert, co-founder and partner of Trident DMG. All right, Richard, was there any lawful problem in what, in what the president did with McConnell? Well, uh, we clearly see a division in the Republican Party here uh, between Mitch McConnell and many in the Senate and the House and the president. Uh, I don't think the president uh, clearly violates the law unless he engages in obstruction of justice uh, or other uh, criminal activities. Well, he asked McConnell uh, apparently is... to stop the criminal, to help prevent criminal investigations into the Russian thing. Yes, and uh, the question is, what he asked McConnell to do? Uh, did he ask uh, uh, Mitch McConnell to try to contact the FBI and squelch the criminal investigation? I don't think so. It's highly unlikely that Senator McConnell would have the power to do that. I believe the president was referring to uh, senatorial and House investigations. Now there, uh, it's not a prosecution. Uh, it is uh, an investigation as part of the oversight function and perhaps the impeachment function. I'm one of those people who thinks this president has uh, uh, crossed the line into conduct that is likely uh, to result in impeachment. Uh, but a president in this situation is going to call up allies on a hill and both the House and the Senate and try and stop those mm -hmm. congressional investigations so. and hearings that could lead to impeachment. Probably that itself not being a crime, but I would take high a, a lot of offense to that if I were a member of the House or Senate. I would consider it highly improper, and my response to that would be to, uh, to start the investigation right away uh, and take the appropriate steps. Lanny, was it just hardball politics? Uh, it's pretty dumb politics, and I agree with Richard that the call to McConnell probably isn't a criminal act, but it's an impeachable act. Let's remember that Richard Nixon ultimately was forced to step down before a Senate vote that would have voted him out of office because he told H.R. Haldeman to call the CIA to try to squelch uh, the investigation of Watergate. So the request by Nixon to use the CIA to squelch the investigation was deemed by Congress to be an obstruction. Whether it's a criminal obstruction, I would remind Richard uh, of the firing of James Comey, uh, asking the CIA director uh, to try to squelch the uh, Mueller investigation, as well as the Michael Flynn request. Those three acts, Philip LaCavara, the former Watergate prosecutor, did say uh, would constitute criminal obstruction or attempted obstruction. But right now, we're talking about impeachable offenses, Larry and his uh, multiple efforts to kill off the Mueller investigation clearly uh, constitute an abuse of power, which is a classic definition of an impeachable offense. You agree, Richard? I agree, and indeed, I think the efforts to uh, squelch the FBI investigation, uh, the firing of James Comey probably was criminal obstruction of justice. Uh, efforts to interfere with the FBI, with the Department of Justice, and their lawful duties to investigate uh, are, in my view, a criminal obstruction of justice. Uh, calling up Congress and asking Congress to back off from an investigation is uh, at least arguably a more political act that probably is outside the scope of prosecution. Uh, uh, but I still think I agree with uh, Lanny that it is an impeachable offense. We have separate branches of government, and Congress's job is to 
exercise oversight, and that includes investigation of the executive branch, and where necessary to take steps such as impeachment of executive officers, and for the president to lean on Congress that way and try to squelch the investigation, is that much more reason to have it? Lanny, does he do things like he uses Charlottesville and North Korea to deflect attention from Russia? Uh, for sure. Uh, I don't know if his mind works in that kind of a logical, strategic fashion. I would actually hope, as evil as that might be, that he has a strategy. Richard Nixon was a smart, intelligent person. This individual, and I say this as much as I possibly can in a nonpartisan sense, I oppose his policies, I won't vote for him, but I now speak as an American quite frightened about a mentally unstable and potentially uh, dangerous president of the United States because of his mind not being right. And I say that very carefully because uh, to say that about any president is a very, very harsh thing to say. But every time that I see him, as I did last night, he's not quite right mentally. And that person with a finger on the nuclear button uh, scares the living daylights out of me. Did the Arizona speech concern you, Richard? Oh, absolutely, yes. It was just more of the same of what we've been getting over the past several months, but it's getting worse and worse. Uh, the reaction to Charlottesville was the worst thing I had ever heard, and I, uh, uh, I'm tired of hearing people describe it as a free speech issue. Uh, when you have people marching through the streets of Charlottesville saying the Jews will not replace us, uh, that's like Germany in the 1930s. Uh, it was a white supremacist rally. And uh, we can debate about the free speech issues of whether they should get the permit or not, whether the Nazis had the right to march through Skokie, Illinois. We had that debate decades ago. But the role of the President of the United States isn't to say, well, the Nazis had free speech. It's to say that uh, National Socialism, the Ku Klux Klan, and other far-right groups do not represent American values and are a threat to the American society uh, and to the Republican Party, quite frankly. I've been a Republican for 30 years. Uh, these are not, uh, uh, this is not the base of the Republican Party. The base of the Republican Party does not read Breitbart News, which is a neo-fascist uh, uh, sympathizing organization. Uh, the Republican conservative media is the Wall Street Journal, the Dallas Morning News. We've got plenty of conservative media outlets there. We do not need to hear co constantly from an extreme right that has absolutely nothing to do with the uh, traditional values of the Republican Party of the United States. And the president is not showing good judgment at all when he appeals uh, to the uh, neo-fascist and the racist elements in our society. Uh, rather than to, at a minimum, the traditional base of the Republican Party of conservative voters, and he certainly really should be appealing to all Americans. Lanny, He's president for everyone. Lanny, it's reported that Mitch McConnell has expressed concern that President Trump won't be able to salvage the administration. You think it could get that bad? I do. Uh, Senator Bob Corker is a conservative Republican. Uh, there are many conservative Republicans with whom I disagree who share my concern about the stability, and that's the word that Senator Corker, a very cautious man, Republican from Tennessee, used. And I believe the word salvage that Senator McConnell used uh, was much harsher and has been much harsher privately. I think that Republicans seeing uh, can you imagine the mental uh, state of a president of the United States who goes to Phoenix, Arizona, and criticizes a man with brain cancer who is a national hero, who he mocked for being caught as a prisoner of war, and now, as recently as last night, he criticized while uh, Senator McCain for a position taken on health care, while Senator McCain is trying to save his life with chemotherapy. I know a lot of Trump supporters, and many of them are intelligent people, and I have a hard time understanding why they supported Donald Trump, but I have to respect their political opinions. But even they have told me that they are worried about the mental stability of the President of the United States, and I keep coming back to only the Republican Party and probably the United States Senate 
will have to make the judgment whether he should be impeached or removed from office under the 25th Amendment, which would require Mike Pence's support under the 25th Amendment. But either one of those is now a very serious question that the Republicans are going to have to address. Richard, are we delving into dangerous territory here when both you and Lanny are not psychiatrists and we're discussing the mental approach of an individual that you have not treated? Richard, is there a danger here? Well, uh, listen to the speech he gave in Arizona. Every American should listen to a tape of that speech and ask whether you want that man to have his finger on the nuclear button able to destroy human civilization. And I think the ordinary American can answer that question just as well as the most sophisticated psychiatrist. Uh, and it, it, I can only say that I'm very, very worried about this situation. It's not about salvaging this administration. It's about salvaging the United States of America. And if he goes me, off on something on North Korea, we're in big trouble. Lanny, you want to Richard, add something? Richard, let me, uh, if I could just jump in. The, um, I've studied this question. The language of the 25th Amendment does not use insanity or mental in the language its inability to discharge the powers and duties. The writers of the 25th Amendment deliberately did not define that because it has to be defined in the political arena, not in a doctor's office. So I'm not prescribing or describing President uh, Trump as insane. I am saying that his absence of stability, of judgment, of recklessness uh, that we've seen the presence of the recklessness, becomes a political judgment that has to be made primarily by Republican senators. The House of Representatives has to look at impeachable offenses, but it's going to primarily come out of the U.S. Senate the way it did in 1974 when Richard Nixon was asked to resign by Barry Goldwater and a delegation of U.S. senators. And that's why the conversation with McConnell is so significant. We'll remember his word, salvage, if there comes a point in time where Senator Corker and other Republicans who are privately saying what I'm saying to you, Larry, and I know that, are so worried about the future of this country, it won't be a political uh, decision. It will be a decision to put somebody who they consider to be stable enough to make the critical judgments as president. Lanny and Richard, thanks for your time today. Appreciate Thank you. you both. Thank, Thank you, you, Larry.